Hello everyone, my name is John Paul Atzapadi and welcome to Love & Mortar's interview with Michaela Attard, one of Mortar's rising metal stars. Hi Michaela, thanks for taking time to speak to us hey, today. Sure. Before we dive into your new music, I kind of want to take this time to get to know you a bit better and to know how you got to where you are in the first place. Your musical journey has taken quite the turn over the years. You started off as uh, training in classical piano and classical singing, and now you've transformed into this uh, metal mistress, so to speak. When did you decide that you wanted to t pursue a career in extreme metal? Well, um, the transition between like classical singing and extreme singing or metal singing, how you want to call it. Um, well, it didn't, it didn't happen over a year or, or two, you know, it was a transition, but Frankly, I still sing them both. Um, all of the um, techniques that I've learned through classical singing, I still apply to my, you know, growling sessions. To be, you know, if you want to call it that way. <laughs> and when was when was that specific point, like in, in your in your teenage years or whenever, when you decided this is what I want to do uh, for, for the rest of your life? And what did you? How did your parents re re react to to all of that? I think actually it's my parents' fault almost, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but it's true, they did make um, um, our um, inception in metal p pivot, pivotal, you know, because um, it was in, in my dad's car, my mom's car, you know, we were driving somewhere and it's always like Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, you know, Led Zeppelin, you know, there'll be Roger Waters or David Gilmour from Pink Floyd, music was there right from the start. And um, I just really took it up from there, you know, like rock for me was always, you know, something that um, was part of my life. Generally, when people think of metal music, they associate it with violence, aggression, and even to a certain extent, Satanism. In fact, in your latest music video, there are kind of these satanic symbolism in a sense. There's um, some rituals taking place, there's upside down crosses, there's, there's you dis dissecting organs as well. I think p people are curious to know, what is your relationship with Satanism? Are you a Satanist? And how does this belief influence your music? I can get it that, you know, sometimes this, that's the Romes in, in Malta, mm -hmm. that if you're a metalhead, then you have to be a Satanist. No, that's not true. That's not true at all, you know? You can have imagery as much as you like, um, but it does not mean that it is Satanic. The imagery that is used in my video um, mm -hmm. is not Satanic. I mean, um, it's actually way, way more and way bigger than that. I mean, sometimes Satanism is associated with metal, but it doesn't mean that all metal music is satanic. In regards to achievements, I think like when it came to like maybe, I don't know, auditioning or getting into Berkeley College of Music, mm -hmm. um, image doesn't really have to do with any of that. It's, it's called talent and, you know, passion perseverance you know and um, I think when it comes to me I think it's it's my style you know I don't really push it it's how I want to look it's how I feel I am the most myself and um, it just really is the way I am this is who I am you have a lot of people that support what you do um, both as a model and as a musician but also there's a small crowd of critics who always kind of pop up every now and then who um, talk about your, your, you as being provocative. How do you deal with such criticism? Does it affect you? I mean, uh, criticism doesn't really affect me uh, just because um, I listen to people, to any review or to anything with, with, with good intentions for everything that I want to go for. My ambitions are there. They don't depend on someone's critique. You know, I think an artist um, really needs to go for what they want and the change that they want. And you need to lead that by example. People aren't seeing, are used to seeing a female vocalist in an extreme metal scene, at least in Malta for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you find yourself fighting an upward battle because of your gender? Yeah, I think um, there is somewhat, to some extent, um, a problem, if you, if you want to call it that, with sexism. Um, towards women, mostly, um, in the mentality of the Maltese people. Like, if I have an opinion and it's coming from a woman, but the same opinion is coming out of a man, then a woman's opinion is criticized and the man, is, you know, isn't because mm -hmm. he's a man, you know. 
I mean, sometimes I feel like that we really, really, really have to be on what we want as a woman, but that's not a problem. I mean, um, it's, it might be cha more challenging, more hard, just like to prove yourself every time. I mean, I'm not here for convincing. I believe in what I say. It's just like a woman, if, if, if she feels sexy or if she, I don't know, um, she feels good in whatever she's wearing, she's honoring the female body, but it doesn't mean that she can be called whatever, you know, someone else feels like she, she, they need to call her or, or that, that she can be touched or, you know, so these things, I think sometimes they're taken a bit um, with um, not so much seriousness as it needs to be. Women in the metal, metal scene, especially all around the world, um, still face a lot of, you know, a lot of attitudes. Everything you've worked so hard for has now accumulated into your new debut album, Nocturne in Red, which is set to be released later this year. Explain to us what your album is about. What fueled you to go solo and what do you hope to achieve with this debut? Um, my upcoming album, Nocturne in Red, um, is actually a continuation of my solo career. Obviously with, you know, great names and great collaborations. Um, I've collaborated with uh, Marco Miniman, he's a legendary, um, multi talented um, mus a musician, you know, he's playing exclusively drums on my album, on all the tracks. Um, there's 10 tracks on the album. Um, there's also Kyle Faruja. Um, he's a local aspiring artist and he's also working on his own project, Gruge. Mm -hmm. I also heard that you produced your own album in your own home studio. How was that experience like? Oh, it's been amazing. I've always wanted to uh, produce my thing ever since like I've started working on music. Before I was only like the singer and the writer, but now after I've graduated, I found like um, I packed up enough cards, just like, okay, let me do this now myself. And I've had the pleasure to work with uh, Tio Metzen. Um, we've mixed and mastered, he's mastered the, uh, mixed and mastered the album. Um, he is, you know, he's mixed Suicide Silence, Miss Sugar, you know, um, artists that I could only, you know, dream about being along the lineup with. Bring Me Blood is the first single of your new album and you released a music video with it, which is quite striking and quite uh, exciting. Uh, and it was directed by none other than local director, Steven Levi Vella. What was the inspiration behind the single and the music video? From what I understand, it has to do with a traumatic incident you experienced a couple years ago where you nearly lost your life. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, Bring Me Blood is, um, is about overcoming. I mean, I was faced with a knife to my throat, to my stomach many times. Um, it really, isn't a nice experience at all, but I do remember the emotion that I felt at that moment. And um, I used it to um, write about the emotion, and it really is about overcoming. Mm -hmm. I overcame it because I've lived. I, lost, I nearly lost my voice for like about a couple of weeks after, after wow. the incident, um, and obviously people don't know that because when I wrote the statement, after my identity was revealed on the media, which wasn't with my consent, mm. I wanted to use the emotion that I felt at that very yeah. moment to, to um, produce a song like this. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here, Michaela. Um, before we, we, we end this interview and wrap things up, what is your final message to all your fans out there? Um, I just want to thank them all for their great support um, and great feedback that I've already received on Bring Me Blood and also on the news of the album Nocturne in Red. Um, it's been amazing to have such a, such a family of people, of fans and followers, friends, um, new connections that I've made and uh, that, they're, that we're all so exciting for, for the launch of this album. Thank you. Sure, thank you.